the fastest two right now on track, Adam LZ and Chelsea Denofa. Adam LZ will lead, Chelsea Denofa will give chase because Adam LZ, number one qualifier. Chelsea Denofa, he qualified 17th. Didn't have the proper wet setup, but now it is all bone dry. We're about to throw up some smoke here as we are here in a Royal Purple Top 16. Send it! Here we go. Adam LZ, Chelsea Denofa, ideal situation. Let's see who comes out with the ideal scenario. Adam LZ initiates into that bank, dropping down quite a bit, but then you see Chelsea Denofa catching up to him. Adam LZ with good transition now going to that outside zone too. Remember, this is first head-to-head -head battle here this weekend. Keeps great posture there. Now into that final outside zone three. Digs a little deeper. Chelsea Denofa falls. And you can see massage that Ford Mustang right to the side of both these guys running on BC Racing suspension across the finish line. Ryan, a great way to start a Royal Purple Top 16. Well, Adam LZ surely wants a little bit of comeback against Chelsea Denofa. A little bit of revenge here for the loss in New Jersey. As we take a look at the replay here, they got off to a fantastic start. You know Chelsea Denofa is going to go 110% all the way. Adam LZ would like to extinguish his championship hopes here by giving him a 32 knockout. LZ, nice initiation there. Chelsea giving him a little bit of room, then closing it quickly. You can see LZ a little bit less angle as he comes off the bank. Then he starts maxing out the angle. Good transition into outside zone two, right in the middle there. But Denofa is sweating him, coming through that smoke line into outside zone three. LZ goes a little bit off course, and Denofa follows him, but keeps it tight. And that's a great chase run to finish up there on that third and final outside zone. Now let's alternate the order here. Denofa will lead, LZ will give chase. You saw how aggressive Denofa was, even just that little nuance. Anywhere that lead car goes, the chase car needs to follow. You saw LZ almost tracking off on the outside zone three, and Denofa followed him even a little bit deeper. That's not what he wanted to do, but I liked that he had the confidence that he could chase him down. Here we go, alternating the order, Chelsea Denofa. Look at Adam LZ, oh man, goes hard to the wall. He does straighten, he does correct out. He salvages the car but that will definitely hurt him as far as the outcome of this head-to-head -head battle. He knew he was going against these guys that have driven against each other before, as well as had some fun at the LZ compound, but it looks like it might be over for Adam LZ. Look at the Coliseum filled with smoke. LZ and Denofa, Brian, I, I think, I mean, what, what are your thoughts? LZ bit off a little more than he could chew on the wall. Yeah, he, uh made an aggressive move going into the wall, but unfortunately was not able to pull it off. The wall will eat up everybody. See right here, he snaps right there. He touches Chelsea Denofa, hits that wall. He's able to get back on it and straight and kind of get back in the mix, but it's a, it's a big mistake. And like I said, you can't give any of those mistakes to Chelsea Denofa. Unfortunately, it is a, a tough break for him. He would really need Chelsea Denofa to make a big, big mistake in the lead, and he does not do that. He didn't make one in the chase on that first portion of this battle and then alternating the order. So as we are taking a look at the replay, you can see, watch overhead. This is just the real truth serum. So watch this, Ryan, as, as you talked about it. Boom, initiates, you see that contact. So, you know, with that front right, you gotta imagine he's counter steered. He makes contact, nitto to nitto, and LZ. I'll, I'll tell you what, that could have been a lot worse. You know, we, you got to think we got Seattle in just, you know, just a few weeks here. So with LZ saving that from hitting the wall, I, I think he com comes out unscathed here, all things considered. Might not advance, but I'll tell you what, his team was, uh, was going to be real busy after this round. So from, uh, from first to being knocked out potentially here, we're going to get our judges' results, and we'll slide them either way for either driver. And it looks like they're in. Slide up left for LZ, right for Denofa. And there we go. Chris Yule says Denofa, as does Ryan Lontane and Brian Eggert. Chelsea Denofa gets the win. Denofa advances on, and the obvious outcome. Wish the lead driver can leave the line. The chase driver noted can leave at any time. Here we go. Kazuya Taguchi initiates. Look at that, Travis Reeder, right there. On the door of Kazuya Taguchi. Taguchi, great angle from him. Reader transitions. Oh, and Reader spins out where he did on his first qualifying run as Kazuya Taguchi continues through the course. And this will be a major advantage as long as he keeps it there. And he does. So, unfortunately for Reader, he is knocked out.
Well, we know these drivers are going to be pushing hard. We will see them continue to push hard the deeper into competition that we go. And that's what we saw with Adam LZ. We will revisit the last half of that battle again, just to give you one more look at it. But here, same kind of situation. This time, Reeder actually stays in the pocket. A little bit less angle, but he surged forward. Had a good move there against Taguchi to kind of maintain proximity. But there he gets bounded up on that little crease coming down off of the bank. And that really hurts him there. He becomes a non-factor after that mistake. And he shuts it down. It's going to be an incomplete. We see Taguchi getting through that run without making a major mistake. And so he will have an advantage going into run number two. Yeah, as you said, Ryan, that's the, that crease, the transition coming off the bank into that second outside zone. That's what threw him off yesterday in his first qualifying run. So I, I said it knocks him out. What I meant is he could potentially knock himself out with that mistake. So now Reeder will lead. He's really hoping that Kazuya Taguchi makes a mistake in that chase position. Here comes that link engine management BMW. Now into that first outside zone. Aggressive initiation from Reeder. But you can see him slowly inching his way down the embankment. A wider line approaching into that second outside zone. Kazuya Taguchi looks like he finds the right spot to put it at. And you got to imagine, Reeder saying, mess up, mess up, but Kazuya does not. He rises to the occasion, hence the name Up Garage. And Kazuya Taguchi puts it down, and I believe that's going to be uh, unofficially all we see of Travis Reed or the remainder of this weekend or this evening. Yeah, unfortunately, you, you got to take some risks. You have to really push the pace, and that's what happens sometimes. I think he, he made a, a really good move there on initiation, but that transition down from outside zone two, that, that cost him. In the lead run, he's got to push as hard as he possibly can. Taguchi understands where he's at in the battle, and uh, he does not make an equal mistake, so that should be enough to get it done. All right, here we go. Here's the results. Travis Reeder, Kazuya Taguchi. Slide of left for Reeder, right for Kazuya Taguchi. And Kazuya Taguchi gets the win. Utilize it, but here he is. Matt Field qualifying for Turk qualifying 20th. And again, that was yesterday in wet conditions. Here we go, that Falcon tires, drip cape, Borley exhaust, Corvette into that first outside zone. He is hungry. Ryan Turk initiates. Not as high as Field, let's see how they handle this. Big angle there from Field, allowing Ryan Turk to get to door to door. And Ryan Turk now slows down, he spins out. So another scenario similar to that of Travis Reeder. And Matt Field finishing out his run. And Ryan Turk, unfortunately, with that mistake in the chase position, very similar to that of Reeder. Let's take a look at it from different angles, Ryan. Well, I, once again, you know, we're seeing these guys push it and pushing it a little bit too hard and trying to find that precision moment to attack and make your, your point known in the chase position. Let's take a look at Ryan Turk here. Here he goes, coming down, tucks behind Matt Field, surges forward, starts trying to close the door. Matt Field, big smoke line, super high on the bank. Turk trying to find an area to attack right here, comes through the smoke line, pushes forward, big angle. And just like Reeder is not able to hold it there, outside zone two and the wall playing a huge role in some of the decisions so far here tonight. Yep, getting all the uh, all the messages coming in. Had a glitch there versus LZ and Denofa if you're watching at home. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of fans watching and the outcome was LZ getting knocked out, but uh, the stream is back up. We are good and ready to see the second half of this battle. Now Ryan Turk will lead, but with that spin, he's gonna need Matt Field, the beast from the bay, to uh, definitely make a mistake in the chase position. And that transition, Ryan, going from uh, outside zone one to, trans to outside zone two, definitely playing a role here as we speed things up. Ryan Turk initiates that gun out. Look at this, he is going for it. Live free or die, that's the motto of his home state of New Hampshire, transitioning back to that second outside zone. A lot of these guys just driving and piling it right into that second outside zone and bringing it across. Absolutely ripping through. Ryan, let's take a look at it here once again. 
Things well, getting interesting here. Matt Field utilizing the kind of the power of his team to get back in the mix in 32, using that competition timeout. Seems like a good move. Now he knows Ryan Turk has really got to pour it on here in the top 32, excuse me, in the top 16. Turk pushing too hard through outside zone two. Coming through this last section, he knows he just needs to kind of stay within relative proximity. He's going to get the win, move on to the great eight, and he does just that. Yeah, he, he did exactly, as you say, Ryan, what he needed to do. Flying over here, inspecting. You got to imagine the frustration levels, it, just how quickly it, it begins and it's over. Scores are in. Slide them left for field or right for Ryan Turk and our current points leader. Oh, wow, look at this. So we are Ryan Turk gets one vote. Was that a two to one? Was that correct? That's not right. Was it unanimous? Here out of the gate. Permatex, GT Radial, BMW. And looks like we are good to go. Matt Sophie making sure they're ready to go. Again, there's that light. See the cylinders illuminating. Once they extinguish, you are good to go. go Dylan Hughes in that first outside zone had an opportunity to have him up here in the booth and take a different perspective. Look at Aaron sliding right up to the side of Dylan Hughes. Here comes Hughes. Now let's see how he handles transition. This has been a really issue, real big issue with all the drivers, looks like. All right, so as Dylan Hughes slides into that second outside zone, Naren comes in. You see a quick little checkup, but then they both slingshot out of that second outside zone. Ryan, uh, again, just going from that first outside zone to that second outside zone, playing a huge issue. We are seeing a lot of those guys surge on their chase run, trying to get in the pocket against the lead. Dylan Hughes really doing a good job this weekend, kind of hitting all the marks. You can see right into that second outside zone, but Naren exceeds it way past the point that the judges would like you to. And then you can see Dylan out front is staying consistent with his lead, so he's giving himself a really great opportunity here to get the win. Okay, now we are uh, we are hearing Jonathan Naren. We have yet to see he's going to be our final battle, or what's scheduled to be the final battle of the top 16. But uh, Frederick Osbo is sitting third in points as you talk about that top five point standings. Osbo will lead Rockstar Energy. Toyota GR Supra, Nitto Tires, will lead. Now throws it into that first outside zone. You can see him hammering down as the sun shining off the gold nose and tail of that of Frederick Osbo. Now look at Rome. Rome Sharp and Tier really consistent through the course. Fluid, both these guys. Ryan, I'd love to hear your analysis here on the second run. Because Rome really delivering. Yeah, and he's having himself uh, one heck of an event. And chasing down Frederick Osbo, no easy task. Osbo seemingly Picking up momentum here at this event with that high qualification. Could have been a little bit more angle coming out of outside zone one. And we see Rome on a slightly tighter line there, but keeping it pretty clean as we come into outside zone two. Rome is going to just follow him a little bit more on the inside. I'd like to see him get deeper there as Osbo gets into outside zone three, locks in on a really solid line there, but then pushes a little bit wide, and Rome follows him as a moving clipping point. So one half done as we get to the second half of the battle here between Rome Charpentier and Frederick Osbo. You can see the five minute clock there, Kevin Wells holding that we're in Jonathan Naren's pit. So Jonathan Naren still up on stand, taking a look, making sure clearance is good as again, he blew off his supercharger belt. So will Naren be able to complete the second half of the Dylan Hughes battle? Now on front, the garageistic federal tire, BMW E36 from Rome Charpentier. All right, let's see. Rome going in and Frederick Osbo nosing in. Look at that. Great mimicking of angle. Amazing proximity there for Frederick Osbo. Now in that second outside zone. Looks like Rome dives in. Frederick Osbo tempers that flame really good. And then bam, drops right to the side of Rome Charpentier. Whoa! And Rome, it looks like you saw Rome actually look back. Looked like it could have been wheel to wheel. You see Rome kind of, you know, the wheel get 
absolutely ripped out of his hands. Let's take a look at this again here, Ryan. Yeah, that was definitely a really interesting occurrence here. Let's take a look at it from the drone as Osbo really sticking it to Rome from the onset. Super close, pacing forward, charging right there against the door of Rome Charpentier. Now coming into the second outside zone, Rome does a great job getting out to the edge of outside zone two. Here comes Osbo surging. He's probably going to get to a point where they're going to rub right there, and then we're going to see Rome forced out of drift. So it does look like there was contact there. Um, that I don't know if this will be classified as a as collision, but he did fall out of drift. So we're going to see Osbo surging. He taps him once, and then Rome unwinds it there. Now, the what the judges are going to ask is, you know, was that contact that resulted in Rome going off course Osbo's fault? Or could he have held in drift there? He, it did look like he, he bumped him just coming in to the latter part of outside zone three, but he's, he was stable for about a half beat after that, and then he kind of came out of drift. I'm not implying a flop or anything like that. I'm just telling you <laughs> what happened yeah. on the ground. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking at it. You know, that's that's our job is to be reactionary. Analyzation, that's the judge's role. So as we take a look at it from different angles, you know, we've seen drivers take hits and keep on continuing on. I, I think it looked more like Rome's front left went, uh, it, Osbo kind of went behind his front left. It looked like more bumper to wheel as opposed to wheel to wheel, which I could see the wheel being ripped out of your hands. But from this bird's eye view, from the, again, the truth serum, as I like to call it, take a look at it again. Ryan, what are you seeing? Well, obviously Osbo bumps him, right? He bumps him uh, once clearly right here on the door, Doink. right? And they may have touched the wheel a little bit with his front bumper, and then a half a beat happens, and then Rome comes out of drift. Now, obviously, um, A happens, and then B happens. Therefore, A caused B, right? That's what, that's what you want to say, but it doesn't necessarily follow that that's the case. And that's what the judges are going to be analyzing and figuring out. The in intuition is that, yes, you know, Rome is not a guy, a driver that would flop. He's going to stay in it. Something must have happened from the bump. Um, but the judges have to make that determination. Yeah, and again, we are we are here giving it our knee-jerk reaction and giving commentary, entertainment, education. And let's take a look at this again. So, right, doink, and then that, that's what I'm just wondering. Like, maybe something broke. The half that, beat. Yeah, yeah, just that that half beat. So you see the, you see the bump, pause, go. Like, so, yeah, you know, and, and like you said. You don't know where you're coming down on it's, it yet. Uh, it's, yeah. Are you uh, thinking about it? Yeah, <laughs> I just, I just, you know, our, 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 our job is to kind of, you know, translate, translate what the judges are thinking, what we're thinking as, you know, we've seen 18 years of Formula Drift competition. And here we are to digest this, find out the scenario, and see how it translates. Yeah, and this is what happens. You know, the judges want to see a plethora of replays to see if there's anything that they didn't pick up. You know, the drone is super helpful because it just gives you a perspective from above that you really oftentimes can't see on camera angles that are at a certain height and shooting into smoke. And it's obviously hard to see between the vehicles. So I think the drone was super helpful there. Um, it doesn't change the fact, I think, what we did see was Oswald does bump him. It looks like it gets him right at the front part of the door. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe maybe the front bumper may have rubbed up against the, the wheel there. And then you got a half beat, and then he comes out of drift there. Yep. Our three judges, Chris Ewell, Ryan Lante, and Brian Eggert. Yeah, how are we doing out there, fans? You guys are uh, around the world right now on the Formula Drift live stream. And we are... One interesting thing that hasn't happened this year that I just thought about What's that? is, you know, the the judges when they're asserting fault, they do have um, a table that tells them if this hap if this happens, then you go here, and if that happens, you go here, and it's basically just like a logical formula. But they can they also have an option that basically says I can't tell who's at fault, right? right. Now this isn't one of those situations, right? Because obviously Osbo did hit Rome. Um, the question is whether or not. Rome coming out of drift was caused by Osbo. That, I think that's really what it boils down to. Right. Well, because again, we, we, you know, taking a look at it earlier, take a look at it earlier. 
All right, yeah, and we have points on the line. I mean, you got first place 100 points, and like you said yesterday, Ryan, you said you wanted to create even a, a, a tighter mix, right? So a tighter mix towards that championship. So this is both for pro and pro spec. First place with 100 points, second place 91, third and fourth, because we do not have a consolation battle, 80 points, fifth through eighth are all the same. And uh, at this time, I'd like to throw it down to Ryan Lontane, who uh, is going to elaborate, Ryan? Yeah, so right now, two of the judges have their votes in. The third one is actually consulting the contact uh, sheet that Sage was just talking about, trying to establish um, who he thinks would be at fault for this. And we asked the um, start line guy down there, Sopa, if he could see where the damage was. And it's on the door of uh, Rome's car. So um, the initial concern was that there was wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, which could, you know, as we've seen in the past, take the wheel out of the driver's hand that was hit. Uh, but in this case, you can actually see Rome look back at um, at Osbo when he gets hit, and um, it looks like he just he takes his eyes off the road, off the track, and um, kind of steers off the road, off the track itself. We can't say that the contact we've seen harder contact than that with, that drivers have driven through, uh, but we you know we can't say for certain because we're not in the car if that was enough to take the wheel out of his hand or if it was enough to push him off the track. So, um, you know, we, we after uh, Chris and I put our votes in, we sort of talked a little bit and uh, we kind of agreed that it seems like uh, it was kind of a shared uh, event that happened there. And um, we see that Brian went with uh, Osbo. So um, we have some difference. You recall the Darren Hughes battle. We'll probably play the BC Racing side-by-side. -side. It's a replay as Darren Goes into that first outside zone. Great angle from Naren. He, remember, he lost his supercharger belt, but it seems to be all super there. Now coming into that second outside zone, both of them very fluid. Look at Dylan Hughes really applying the pressure. And Naren into that last and final outside zone. And you can see Dylan. Oh, wow. Across the finish line. Things got really interesting there. Ryan, any standout moments for you between Darren and Hughes? Good use of the uh, competition timeout there, just trying to make sure, kind of Matt Field asked to make sure that he gets through this battle. And no, uh, his supercharger blew, super, belt blew off. Supercharger belt, yeah, to get he through this that. battle. And I think what we need to do is kind of go back and see the side by side. Let's revisit and refresh that first battle in our mind. You can see Dylan out front on the left hand screen in the chase in the right. I like the way Naren attacked the wall at the beginning, but that he kind of fell off. And notice that Dylan is up a little bit higher. Now coming down off the bank, Dylan's keeping good proximity into outside zone two. Naren goes a little bit wide, but Dylan didn't get all the way out to outside zone two on his chase. Now this final section here, there is a point of difference. You can see Dylan deep into that outside zone and also tight on his chase run. All right, Dylan Hughes and Jonathan Naren waiting for the outcome there as we look at that BC Racing. Side-by-side side instant replay. And I think that's a, a good indicator to see what's going on here. Matt Sopa waiting for to point to who gets the win. Dylan Hughes, Jonathan Aaron. Slide him left for Dylan Hughes, right for Jonathan Aaron. It looks like Dylan Hughes gets the win. Jonathan Aaron knocked out as the boy from North Carolina. Dylan Hughes will be going to come inside. You do this S turn. Yeah, it, is a, it is a very dynamic, different track. Eve Meyer will lead, Dan Burkett will give chase. Here comes Eve Meyer, Dan Burkett, Ryan, you saw it yesterday, and here it is again. Wow. Dan doesn't give a drift. Here we go, as look at that Eve Meyer. You see some shaking up of Dan Burkett, and now Eve Meyer in that last outside zone. And Dan Burkett, with that proximity, brings it across the finish line. Man, that was... I was kind of speechless there because it just it got it got weird. Like Eve got aggressive, Dan got aggressive, and then he straightened out. Let's take a look at it. You know, if nothing else, both of these drivers ha have really been putting on a, a fine sp a display of aggressive driving. But I think Eve Ooh. gets a, the better of the banks here. He stayed up higher. He didn't have that reduction in angle that Dan had. But Dan is keeping the pressure on. And notice that he doesn't he does follow Eve. Uh, on the line on outside zone two. It's gonna be a mistake for Eve there because he did not get all the way out and fill that zone. Better on three, but then that gave Dan the opportunity to stay close there and keep, keep proximity on through the finish line. How drastic will that, will that initiation, or excuse me, on the first outside zone, how will that affect 
the outcome for Dan Burkett because it seemed it seemed that he really fell out of angle there on uh, on the bank. I think it will have an impact if you just take that as a solo moment, okay. um, you know. And, and then what we have to look at is the you know the comparison between the two. And with him, with without him leading, it seemed you know if, if he was leading, that would be in my eyes an incomplete or incomplete or uh, an unchaseable lead run. So let's take a look at this again here. Second half of this battle, the Nitrous being purged. Dan Burkett, Rad Industries Gear Wrench Supra. Eve Meyer will chase him down. The bullet flapping in the wind here of Dan Burkett. Firing off, look at that great angle there from Dan Burkett. Great angle, but would like to see him a little higher up. I mean, he is absolutely burning those GT radials off into that second outside zone. Eve Meyer getting a lot of grip. But a lot of side bite there from Dan Burkett. Man, when he gets that open air and he's just got all this open road in front of him, he really performs well. But is that going to be enough to offset? I mean, Eve, you know, quite a few uh, vehicles back. What are, what are your thoughts, Ryan? Well, you know, I wanted to see Eve stay a little bit closer on, on the big bank and, and kind of keep the pressure on him. But, you know, he gave him a little bit too much of a gap. Dan did have a little bit of a, of a mistake there on the bank as well. Um, but and, but he de Eve definitely gave some back. Now, Dan had a little bit of a reduction of angle entering outside zone three, and he kind of wobbled around a little bit. So we, were, we are seeing mistakes from both drivers. And really, I think at this point, it's going to be who made the bigger the mistakes. Now, see, Dan kind of started midline and, and worked his way up. And, and that's good that he worked his way up. But to have an equal line on that big bank is, I think, important when they do the lead comparison. So it's going to be a, you know, another tough one for the judges. You know, Dan did have some sizable mistakes, but Eve didn't really put the pressure on the way that I would have wanted him to. Yeah, most definitely. All great observations, Ryan. Thank you so much. So, and Eve, you can see, minus the bumper, the front right light looks like he's winking at you. He got into the wall earlier today. So as we are quickly getting through our top 16, remember we have our one more time of Osbo third in points. And here we go. We are looking at the BC Racing side by side. Go for gold, the official suspension of Formula Drift, BC Racing. So on the left, you see Eve Meyer Dragging that wall, and that was that was a major correction and straightening there of Dan Burkett. Eve, as you said, would like to see him closer. Compromise is getting deep. He makes that correction in that chase position. Dan Burkett, he looks like he finds his sweet spot because Eve, as you said earlier, took a shallower line, allowing Burkett to gain that proximity. As uh, looks like we're uh, drifting in the sky as well. Beautiful night for uh, for a soar, bro. Yeah, that's a good one. Fun times. Beautiful sunset. And slide them left for Eve Meyer, right for Dan Burkett. That's a one more time from Chris Yule. And a Eve Meyer vote from Ryan Lontane. And Brian Egger says Eve Meyer gets the win. Eve Meyer gets the win. Ryan Lontane, we're going to ask you to throw on your headset. Once I'm allowed to take it on board and, and figure out how to move forward. Rule books are developed. They're not set in stone. They, they develop, they enhance. Here we go. Frederick Osbo absolutely shining bright like a diamond here. Frederick Osbo pulling away from Rome Charpentier. So not making an easy task there from Rome as, wow, just as I say, they get to the side of that Toyota Supra. Rome Charpentier now brings him to that third outside zone. And Frederick Osbo puts the Norwegian hammer in his right foot and hammers down across the finish line. Man, really well done by Frederick Osbo. Let's take a look. So both drivers trying to get it right this time around. Osbo right out of the gate, making a big impression there. Smooth, stable initiation. We saw a little bit of some wavering there from Rome, and he's back trying to gain ground here. Now he's going to tuck in. Does a great job following in Osbo to outside zone two. High marks there, but Osbo back around. Better job on outside zone three, and leaves a gap between him and Rome as they get through the finish line. So solid lead run there from Osbo. A little bit of a shaky start in the chase for Rome Charpentier. We'll see it one more time. The main thing that I saw on the initiation from Rome is he just wasn't as settled and he was on a lower line. You yeah. see that little flub right there? And he did give him that gap. So Rome has got to step up here and put down 
an amazing lead run to try to get back at Frederick Osbo. You know, he's he's got Osbo in his rear view mirror. That's a, that's a big task. Hey, welcome to top 16. Here's one more time against the former champ. Here's, a, you know, talks about the moderns on his wing, and I think that's a, I think it's a great, I, you know what, hats off to Rome. Let's see how he fares. Rome sharpens here. You got one battle on your belt, top 16. Don't leave it in the judges' hands as Rome initiates with the clean arrow. Massive angle there. Frederick Osmo, I think, is going to give him a little bit of room here, and then he's going to try to stick it to the door of that BMW E36. Now watch this. This is where Frederick Osmo could really twist the knife on Rome Charpentier, and that another what? He did it again. Oh, come on. What are the odds? That was absolutely the same location because it's so deceiving. That angle, it looks like it's a finish line, but it's exactly the same point. I think a lot of people, there will be a, a group of people will think that Osbo got a second opportunity on that first battle. And there will be some people that think that it was the right call um, for the majority voters. On this second one, you would imagine that keeping the pressure on is important and trying to control the vehicle is going to be of utmost importance. But if you told me what were the odds that Osbo was going to make contact again with Rome in that section of the course, if indeed he did, which it looks like he did, I would tell you it's one in a million. Here we go. So this is this is this is going to be the truth serum. Tap. It, it, and, okay, and it's another so one. <laughs> here's what's interesting is it's at the latter portion of the outside zone three. The max angle. You're, you're, you're max angled out. So yeah. any little tap is going to throw you off. So here's here's where you know the, the fault lies. Osbo just saw that happen to Rome spinning out regardless. He goes right. Now he goes left. He spins into him, but looks like he taps his door. There's no wheel on wheel contact. It almost uh, does he tap him and then he starts spinning, or is the, does he tap him after he spins? If it, I mean, if he's maxed out on angle and just you have to think of the attitude of the vehicle, it getting disrupted, you know, suspension compressing, uh, com compressing, excuse me, um, and the compression of the suspension. This is really interesting, Ed, but to to see it once, as you said, Ryan, for you know the first time, the second time. So Frederick Osbo, slide him left, Rome, slide him right. And yeah. it looks like, I mean, without very minimal re instant replays, yeah. Frederick Osbo gets the victory. I think, yeah, I think what, what the judges are seeing there, and we'll let, we'll let Ryan come. Yeah. And then to challenge the judges to say, hey, are you guys being consistent with the criteria? Not you're bringing your own set of criteria to, to judging and judging it from outside the system. Here we go with the next battle. Two former champions, Michael Essa, FCP Euro, Liquid Molly, GT Radio, BMW, Von Gitt Jr. A little late initiation. They're not late, but not as early as Michael Essa. And Von Gitt Jr., surprisingly, not high on the bank. Does have proximity, but let's see how he handles this second outside zone. Woo! Look at that. Von Gitt Jr. performing surgery there on that second outside zone. Drops into formation. And now finishing out. Vaughn gets a little squirrely Dan there. Let's take a look at this again. Ryan, what 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 are your thoughts here taking a look at uh, at again Vaughn on his initiation got wasn't wasn't as high. It was, it was unlike Vaughn. Yeah, it looked like he was uh, got a much more aggressive after. I think he kind of realized he had a little bit of a flub there on initiation, but he kind of gets back in toes. He's on a slightly lower line here. He's got left foot breaking going Jimmy. on. Essa's pretty smooth and consistent up top. I love that transition, but he pulled a little bit of angle out of the car. Now Vaughn is starting to attack here. He's finding areas where he can get on the inside, but stay at the right line with Michael Essa. And that's a great display there, though he does go a little bit wide. He's following Michael Essa where he goes. Michael S had an interesting line going from outside zone one to outside zone two. And, and he looked great on outside zone one. He put the car in the right place. Um, when he transitioned one to two, it, it, he came up and he actually was a little bit short of the outside zone two, which I think threw Vaughn off because he's already thrown off. I would, uh, I'd love to see side by side overhead. I think that, I think that would be really interesting as well. Kind of both, both drone cams overhead. If we could, if we could mimic that. So uh, let's take a look as we get those gentlemen back to the line. Here is another look 
So look at Essa high on the bank, consistent. No hiccups. Watch this line. I, again, the overhead snappy transition from Essa. Yeah. That was nasty. But but when he did it, it looked like it, it, he came up a little bit short on that second outside zone. Oh, absolutely. And, and you can tell how the bumps affect some of the drivers yeah. if they're at the right lock position or wrong in that yeah. case. And it, and it kind of it messes them up. We can see Vaughn here. It looks like he's trying to clear that bumper out. Yep. Uh, I believe that happened right at the end of outside zone three. And we'll get the second half of the battle under, underway. Vaughn, your defending champion. Michael Essa, a former FD champ. So 10 years separating the two championships, 2010, 2020 for Vaughn. Nitrous being purged on both vehicles. The Monster Energy Nitto tire, Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D. The Mach-E 1400 over there at Newton Festival Speed right now, a crazy Ford all-electric vehicle. Being powered over at Goodwood Festival Speed. Here we go, now it's all about Vaughn getting Jr. In that first outside zone, looking a lot more comfortable. Throwing some more angle at it. Let's see how he handles it. And there's that uh, that that crease playing a role here. Oh wow, Essa, really well done. Just barely letting that vehicle pass right in front of him. But Vaughn sets it and forgets it. Oh, it looks like we got a little love tap or a hate tap there towards the end, Ryan. That was one of the the best crossover tuck-ins that I've seen leaving outside zone two, going into outside zone three from Essa. I think it's just gonna be how consistent was he on the remainder of the course. Now, you don't wanna give Vaughn Gittin Jr. that much of a gap, right? That's a three, four car gap. And Vaughn is not running away, right? He's staying mid-high line. He comes mid-line on the uh, exit, right at the edge of outside zone two, but boom, Essa right there, tucks up on the inside. Great job there. But then he kind of re reduces the angle. He doesn't stick to it until we get to this latter part here where he is on the right line and Ooh. angle. And we are going to see the side-by-side. -side. And you already know this is going to be a, a tough battle to call because yeah. we did oh, have here we go. Love this angle. some highlights from both drivers. But uh, here it is one more time. So you can see the BC Racing side-by-side -side instant replay going for the gold. So coming down, watch. So Essa has a snappy transition. Vaughn is more fluid. He puts all of his vehicle in an outside zone. As you said, Ryan, Essa just tucks right in. Let's see how long they stay in that final outside zone. Looks like Vaughn stays in. Essa, Vaughn applies some pressure. They leave it about the same time. Again, trying to, you know, one eye going for each, each, uh, each screen here. But love that overhead. And then when it goes uh, for the side by side, I think it really breaks it down. Shout out TJ Hunt. Sheesh. Thanks for watching, Teach. Hashtag FD Erie. Hashtag FD E R I E. Ryan is a uh, your judge. Imagine in a world where Ryan Sage is a judge. Yeah. Which way would you go? Well, I, I don't want to say until the scores are in because I don't want people to think that, that we influence. Oh, they, they already think that. It's already done. <laughs> it's already done. <laughs> we're, we're the fourth and the fifth judge. You know that, right? I'll we're write it down look, on paper right, right yeah. now. Ready? Here we yeah, go. Yeah, throw it across the table. Make me an offer I can't refuse. Here we go. Vaughn Gitt Jr. gets one vote and now two votes. And it is unanimous. So Vaughn Gitt Jr. gets the victory. Lorette Nickel, let's throw it. Does that. Um, and in that situation, it would have been very easy to be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go to our final battle, top 16. Odie Bakshi, second in uh -oh. points. Taylor, full pull hole. Woo! Goes for the gusto, but ends up having to back off. Odie Bakshi's screaming into that second outside zone, and Taylor Hole just absolutely giving it the beans. And Odie Bakshi continues on through the course. Ryan, well executed by Odie Bakshi's Taylor Hull. Man, this guy is absolutely possessed on initiation. Goes for it on that second outside zone. What's going through his head? Yeah, two odd things there. The, the initiation by Hull, super aggressive. But take a look at Odie. He initiates, he starts getting back on throttle. It looked like a little bit late there. We didn't see the smoke line until he started getting past our sides. And then Hull surges forward. He bounds up here, spins out. And so the remainder of the run, Odie's got to finish it. But I, I definitely want to get, you know, a little bit of some insight on that uh, initiation there from Odie. Typically, we start seeing smoke piling up much sooner before then. 
All right, we are back to the start. Let's take a look at this. What is going down? I'm yelling timber. Here it goes Taylor Hole. Comp cams next to tires. Yellow speed suspension. Look, Molly kind of like ETSD. She's got a big heart. Here we go. Let's go. Taylor Hole, full pull. Cody Bashi, you can see him working it to the side. Both these guys, a little wavering, but Taylor Hole, max angle there. And there's that suspension coming into play. Filling that second outside zone. Both these gentlemen dialing in. Man, the transition that Taylor Hole has. I mean, the car is definitely bouncing. It's floating across the track. But I just like how nasty and aggressive he is. Does it work here? TBD. As a driver, he has certainly come up quite a few notches over the past couple of years, especially with the top 10 finish last year. I think we still have an unanswered question from that first run, which I definitely want to get to with the judges. The second run, though, much cleaner. You see both guys, a smoke line kind of starts right around the same time. Hole driving that high line. Now he's coming down mid. This is where the judges want to see you go. Gets to that second outside zone in a really aggressive way and was able to hold it without going off course. But here's Odie kind of sticking with him pretty much throughout the entirety of the course. He's not door to door, but he's keeping that proximity on. So I feel like we need to address, obviously, the the the, in, the apparent incomplete by Taylor Hole. Uh, on before outside zone two with a spin, right? That's a, that's an incomplete as it stands by itself indi individually. But I still feel like I have an unanswered question with Odie on the initiation. Yeah, you you really caught that eagle eagle eye cherry over here as we got the Osprey in the sky. So yeah, that that was interesting. I, I, Taylor was aggressive, but the judges are actually requesting an overhead look. Here it is. So Odie Bakshi's initiates. Yeah. That, that it, it looked like he initiated and maybe just balked us a, a moment. Uh, just that beat, and that makes all the difference in the world when you're entrusting that lead car to go go at it. Well, let's just say that 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 he did do that, right? He, he you know he comes out like Soren says, I missed a gear or something like that or whatever. Then the question becomes, what impact did it have on Taylor in that part of the course? It didn't seem to have too much of an impact on Taylor. Where Taylor made his mistake was at the beginning of outside zone two. Yeah, yeah, you did You did see Taylor get thrown off, and we've talked about it for, for years. Once you get thrown off of that line and, and you kind of, you know, you've, you've had so many turns at this course, it's hard to recalibrate. Yeah, and, and then becomes, okay, if you do recalibrate, recalibrate, when is it okay to say that you have done that, right? right? That now, from here on out, if you make mistakes, it's on you. Yep. Right? Yep, like, I've had enough, throw your hands up. <laughs> you know, I'm out. I'm out. All right, so here we are. We are taking a look at it again. So here's Odie leading, initiates. See, the smoke line for him starts later than Taylor's. Um, and it just didn't seem like a, a fluid initiation, an aggressive moving forward. Taylor we flicks it. Notice on the momentum map, it's a it's a very sliver. Yeah, it's a sliver, right? It's like, ah, ah, ch ah. <laughs> <laughs> That was a solid, that was a solid uh, impersonation of an LS initiation with a sliver of hesitation. Well, well. What do we have here? Judges are still deliberating this one. And, and Ryan, now we can start talking about not envying the judges, as well as, as well as second place in points, Odi Bakshis, yeah. who talked about quietly just, you know, just consistently going, going at it. So here it is again. Look at this. So really analyzing it. So he gets initiated, initiate, right? Breaks a little, a little bit. And, and then he's not fully on throttle until, you know, past the link sign out there. Um, but I, I like your question about the, the recalibration, right? And when should you be recalibrated? Because that right there, that spin, that seems like that should be at that point. You're further down into. Um, the run to where the effects of the initiation should have taken hold, right? And you yeah. got time to get back and like, okay. And so, look, that's a sliver, right? Compared yep. to much wider momentum zone before outside zone two. Yep. And we use we use the term momentum as opposed to decel, um, where momentum is basically you, you don't need to be on power, 
right? So you don't need to be on throttle. Uh, it's a better way of saying decel because we're not necessarily want you to slam on the brakes because, oh, it's a decel zone, dude. I can do whatever I want. No, it's, it's a fluid forward motion without being under power. Well, the way it works is we take uh, data off the cars and we see where we where they have those changes in momentum and then we mark it on the course and those are the two areas that we saw All right hey how are we doing out there lake Erie? you guys having fun make some noise my buddy brandon's watching from home and he says i don't know are, are these guys having fun out here or what so i, I need you to stomp your feet who do we got odie bakshi sir taylor hole and it looks like they are going omt Across the board, Ryan. Got to explain that. Yeah. So, uh, Lontane thrown down to our Canadian confidant, the maple syrup crusher, the poutine punisher, <laughs> Ryan Lontane. I, I, I don't like that. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so, looking at what we just watched, we Sorry, looked eh? at the replay over and over and over, as you saw. We were trying to see if Odie did get back on throttle late, and it looks like he did. Now, that caused um, him to be a little bit low on outside zone one in the chase position. We're talking about Taylor here um, because he, he was trying to be aggressive in the chase, which we really appreciate. We like that. We want to see that. Um, so he was uh, that, that he, he was definitely affected by what Odie did in the lead position. Now, the spin that happened here on the infield at outside zone two, is that affected? Was he affected by that up until that point? Like, it's it's really difficult for us to say how that affected him in that serious kind of way. So we kind of thought, let's give them another chance to start this over again from scratch and uh, not hold either one of them responsible, and hopefully we can find a winner. Here we go, Odie Bakshis coming down toe-to-toe, -to -toe, tip to tail. And now Odie Bakshis, much more proper, straightforward initiation. Let's see a quick little yank of the brake, now dropping into that second outside zone. Odie Bakshis, you can see the posture of the vehicle. Oh, look at Taylor Hole, nice transition there. Odie Bakshis looks like he does exceed that track line. Taylor Hole, hammering down, look at this. Who is this intimidator? Full pull, Hole slamming into the side from the top rope. Taylor Hole has really found Woo. an incredible and unorthodox but beautiful way to get into outside zone two in the chase. This time around, though, in the lead, Odie much cleaner. You can see Taylor pretty much within a car's length. Good battle here. He could have washed out right there in the chase, but he doesn't. Gets back into it, bouncing around, and is able to get into that outside zone and fill it pretty much right on the same line with Odie Bocchis. Now, here as we get into outside zone three, Again, Odie trying to find that right line. You see the tap, 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 Dang. tap, tap, and he stays in it. So great job by Odie Bakhtis. Aggressive driving there by Taylor Hole. We are seeing Taylor go back into the loading area. And obviously, if that is the case, he may need to fix the vehicle. I do not think that the judges will give him, um, they will give him fault for the contact. Right. So he may have to use, a, he may have to burn a competition time out here. Yeah, we're seeing Amy Bakshi's, Odie's wife and spotter up here inquiring to find out who was at fault. Obviously Taylor's at fault in that scenario. I don't think he was slowed down. You know, I don't think Odie slowed down at all. That was fluid. Glad there wasn't any scenario of that of Osbo and Rome. But I think this is, this is Taylor Hole just really manifesting over, over the years. Just his aggressive personality, him coming out and just, and just, really really going after it so taking a look at the replay ryan i mean i'd have to think taylor holes at fault here yeah i mean odie's not he, odie's not on the brakes we're not seeing a, a major slowdown from him now this is the this is the textbook definition formula drift textbook definition of contact right the we have contact but the run doesn't stop right and e when that happens the cars may still need to be inspected and if fault is given it doesn't necessarily mean that there's um you know, something like an equivalent to an incomplete, that's when the run stops, right? But what this does do is allow the person that's not at fault to utilize time without having to use a competition timeout. Yeah. The other person who is at fault would need to burn a competition timeout if they have it and if they need to repair their vehicle. Hey, Ryan, have we gotten who's at fault yet? All right, just want to make sure as I uh, believe so if Taylor Hole is not at fault, he called that comp timeout. Let's see what transpired. 
All right, so yeah, the judges are saying Taylor Hole is at fault. So Taylor Hole would need to utilize his competition timeout. Five minute clock is there, Ryan. Yeah, so I think what we thought, what we yeah. intuited there uh, turned out to be true. You see our competition director there, Kevin Wells, putting the comp time out uh, for Taylor Hole. This will be his one and only burn. We saw Matt Field burn one a little bit earlier as well. So this is an example here of him needing to use it because there may be some damage to the vehicle. All right, our NGK competition timeout. When we come back, we will finish out the uh, the uh, second half of this battle. There's that Edelbrock as we are getting going here. Here we go. When we come back, the continuation of Odie, one of the best chase drivers in the game. Taylor Hole leading that comp cams. Next to tires, Lucky Molly, Edelbrock, Cadillac ATSV, Odie Boshies. Look at that. The Type S lights blowing them up. In that first outside zone, both of them absolutely on fire. Now to that second outside zone, shredding that front bumper, Odie Bakshi. Leaving it all out here on the track, literally and figuratively. That's Taylor Hole in that outside zone. Odie Bakshi right there. Let's see if he's going to give him a little love tap as well. Some great driving by both these drivers. Wow. That was insane. Yo. Odie Bonchis turned it up another level, and it could only have happened because Taylor Hole gave him a great lead run to follow. And that's what we love about this sport. When both drivers are pushing the limits, you see that wow. initiation together. Hole is on a high line, but so is Odie Bonchis. He's following it as close as he can, so close on that crossover. Great job there. Stays in the line with Taylor on the crossover out of outside zone two into three. Only right there for a second does he reduce angle for a little bit, but right back in the pocket there again. Absolutely incredible. Just nerves, nerves of steel here for Odie Box. I want to see him on that on the entrance of that third outside zone. It's kind of it kind of gets lost in the smoke, but that's yeah, you see him dive in. He does make contact. So these guys are battered and banged up, but yeah, you see Odie go and punt it out. Looks like he does drop a tire. If there was dirt, say it was Road Atlanta, you'd see kind of a little brown cloud being thrown up there. But, uh, you know. That it, was it, the, the it, one mistake that he made, right? Yeah. He went a little bit wide there. And he had, to, he had to reduce angle a little bit to kind of catch up because he was on a kind of a, a, a tighter line at that point. But uh, overall, it was tremendous from both drivers. This is a tough one for the judges here. And obviously, a lot of uh, consequences on the line for, for Odie Bakhtis as a championship contender, but also Taylor Hole, who's continued to make his mark on the series. Yeah, just the excitement level that Taylor Hole brings on his runs, especially here this weekend and progressing. Taylor Hole sitting 29th in points overall, but that's not the real story with Taylor Hole, just his determination to, to get on the box, to get on the podium as you look at it side by side. Yeah, and so you get the side by side, uh, me looking right now, I'm looking at Hole in, in the chase position. And I, I like the way that he attacked outside zone too, right? So the judges are going to be looking at what was the proximity, the line, the duration of proximity has been something that has been spoken about a lot. And this is where the contact is made. I mean, you can't get much closer than that. So Car 82 and Odie Bakchis awaiting the judges' result here, the final battle of the top 16. All right, both these drivers just uh, absolutely knackered. And you could see just, you know, carbon and Kevlar and metal just down. I mean, this is this has got to be some of the best driving we've seen from Taylor Hole. And, that, and you, and you got to love it. All right, let's see what we got. Waiting for the outcome here. Let's move it along, fellas. <laughs> yeah, license registration, please. Odie uh, with, the, with the lights there. Shout out to, uh, again, to Rutt, local Georgia boy as well. Randy Johnson, we're going to see you there. Randy and Ryland in just a little bit. Evergreen Speedway at the end of the month, July 30th and 31st. So uh, hopefully all you PNW residents buy your tickets now what's going on here Ryan what are we waiting on everybody buffering still well I would imagine there's probably a request for a final replay is that what's going on here oh okay yeah so results are in all 
All right, waiting for the outcome here, our three judges. All right, and looks like All right, scores are in. And it looks like a one more time there from Chris Yule. Ryan Lantan says Odie Bakshis. And one more time. They're going at it again. And boos, boos are pouring over the crowd right now here, Ryan. I feel like now the, the, the competition staff is going to have to move forward here. We can't wait for another one more time. And we are seeing. Kazuya Taguchi uh, coming down. Yeah, here's here's the side by side, Ryan. Again, Odie leading on the left, Taylor Hole leading on the right. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of get it, right? Like Odie's chase run was phenomenal, and he just made that one mistake that you mentioned in outside zone three. Um, but Taylor Hole also in his chase run did not really give him too much room. I mean, you can't get much closer than that. And we're talking about halfway through outside zone three that he's basically punching his door in. Yeah, and, and with that punching of the door, it, it pushed him out. So with him being, you know, off off the edge of the course, I, I, I see that, you know, as as you know, maybe some of some of the fans here locally or even online is blowing it up saying, you know, why? Well, there's certain aspects and, and you know, these guys are critics. They, they know the sport. They've seen a lot of runs and they're going to overanalyze to the umpty ninth degree to make sure. And uh, again, it was still not unanimous. It was two to one. Yeah. So it, it, it gets it gets tough. The Hawk is not digging it. The, o the, the Osprey. The Osprey. It's like y'all. The yeah. audacious Osprey. Can't deal with it. Here we go. Kazuya Taguchi, our first battle of the grade eight. Kazuya Taguchi and Chelsea Denofa. Kazuya initiates in that first outside zone. And Chelsea Denofa giving himself some room. Let's see how Kazuya handles this up garage. ISR 86. Now into that second outside zone. Kazuya Taguchi absolutely delivering this track. Really favoring his driving style. And all the way through that final outside zone. Yeah, I got to tell you, a great lead run by Kazuya Taguchi and Chelsea Denofa did not let him get away at all. Yeah, Taguchi kind of making it a little bit clear right there in that lead run. Doing? Like, hey, you're going to have to chase down a pretty solid lead run, and, and he does just that. Denofa in the chase, like you said, he gives him a little bit of room on initiation here, and you have to wonder if that's him thinking, you know what, I've probably got more grip in the car, I'm going to reel him in here, then stick it door to door, coming off the zone number one. Taguchi was just at the edge of outside zone two, so that's an area that Denofa could potentially improve on in his lead. But Denofa surges forward, no contact, stays pretty tight there through the, the, the final part of outside zone two. But Kazuya Taguchi, solid lead run to kick things off. Here we are in the link engine management, top eight, the great eight. Denofa will now lead. Kazuya Taguchi will give chase. And and here we go with the second half of this battle. See how Chelsea handles this. And there it is, the all-new Toyota. Excuse me, no, they just debuted the all-new Toyota Tundra. Toyota loanies uh, that vehicle for the entirety of the season. And the FD 2020 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro is on track, shows durability, versatility, and reliability. So we've driven that to each round so far and to the rest of the events. Also, the brand new 2022 Tundra was just revealed and looks even beefier. So take a look, Toyota Tundra. Here we are looking at Odie Bakshis' vehicle. That Vortex supercharged, and this thing, seen better days. Leave it on him, he shredded both the front and rear bumper. Vortex supercharged LS. And we are clear to send. Second half of this battle, Chelsea Denofa out front, Toguchi in the chase position. BC Racing Nitto Tire Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D. Chelsea Denofa initiates. Great angle from Chelsea Nova. Now Chelsea flexing his muscles out front. 
Kazuya had a great lead run, but Chelsea was maybe tempering the flame as now they go to that second outside zone. Transition that final outside zone goes Chelsea. There's that bumper budget that the RTR team always talks about. Chelsea Nova clicking another bank, another uh, bumper in that bank. Seems what like people are think? starting to get the hang of the course now. <laughs> yeah, it got really interesting early on. Where, where, where do you think was the most difficult section of this track for drivers previously? Outside zone two. You know. I would say one to two. Yeah. That transition going off the off the bank into two. Some would just kind of go straight and then bounce out. Speeds are picking up. You know, it, it's one of those kind of things that drivers have to recalibrate. Um, in this battle here with Denova, he does get a gap on Taguchi on outside zone one. Taguchi came up a little bit short on outside zone two in his chase, but he kind of stayed in the game for the most part. Did he, he really push the pressure there, stayed in the smoke line or, or right to the side of the smoke line on that final outside zone. But let's take a look at the onset. You can see Denova starts to walk on, on Kazuya Taguchi. Now coming down into this section here, really tough part. Denova's gonna hit just the edge. Look how much further on the inside Taguchi is in his chase run. So that's a mistake there in the chase for Taguchi, but here much better. Much more on the line with Denofa and kind of stayed right in proximity. So he got some back there. And uh, one more look at it here from the crow's nest. You can see that's the area where he walks. And you don't want to give that gap to Denofa. I like the way that he searched for it. And he probably felt like he needed to cut the line here a little bit to gain proximity because for the remainder of two and three, he was able to kind of keep it within half the car length to maybe a couple inches there towards the end. Do we have a verdict? Do we have a winner who's moving on to the final four? And we are waiting to find out. All right, it is unanimous. We get a winner. It is Chelsea Denofa. Denofa gets the win. Chelsea Denofa gets the victory and moves on to the final four. Now, Ryan, you know, Denofa shaking things up here. Our points leader and the dozer trying to take him down. Matt Field initiates Dylan Hughes right there. Backs off a little bit, has to make a correction. But Matt Field, great posture there, and Dylan Hughes, a major correction. Coming off that bank. Now out of that second outside zone, into the third outside zone. Looks like Dylan has found his sweet spot. And Matt Field, even just a, just a bit sweeter there all the way through the entirety of the course. Dylan Hughes was playing a really risky game there, but I, I feel like he had to, and it's going to end up biting him, at least on the first half of this run. But we've seen this aggressive approach from the chase drivers. They accelerate a little bit longer. They try to get in the pocket and stay with that lead driver. Hughes does that. He has to fall off, but it's not here until he gets pinched by, by uh, Field coming off the bank, and then he makes that big correction there following that maneuver. And that looked like an independent mistake there that just was coming from an over-aggressive approach, leaving outside zone one. Notice how much grip the car has, though, to catch up to field in outside zone three. It just tells you where Dylan is with the vehicle development right now. Um, it definitely gives you an idea of the opportunities that could be available to him if he can kind of dial in some of these other elements. Made that mistake. He's got to go to the lead now, see if Matt Field can make something equal, but somebody's moving on into the final four. All right, so Dylan Hughes will now get the clean air. Fresh air out front. What do you got? The Permatex BMW initiates. And Matt Field right there. Dylan, great angle. Solid initiation. Oh, we got a tap. Let's see how he handles that. Manners it, no problem. Into yeah, that second boy, outside zone. Steve, it? Taking that love tap. Look at that, continuing on. A great effort for both these guys, an effort and a delivery. Stand and deliver and bring it across that finish line. Ryan, we've seen a lot of contact, and that was sick. That was awesome. Absolutely just a sweet tap in that transition. If Dylan Hughes loses this battle, 
because of the straighten in his chase run. He deserves a round of applause for taking right. a beating from Matt Field coming off the bank and staying in it and finishing the run. Great job by both drivers here. Look at that. Almost equal angle Boom. and right there. Big tap. Big tap. I mean, that's a punch by Matt Field coming off the bank from Dylan Hughes. Doesn't matter. Here I go. I'm going to continue to finish the run. And look at this. Even get some back on field. This field kind of gets lost in the smoke for a second, has to find himself and then finish the run. But I think it's uh, going to come down to the severity of that straighten from Dylan Hughes. Real quick, was the contact made due to some slowing down? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was. He yeah, was he was you, le he was left foot breaking uh, uh, on the bank, and that's perfectly acceptable by the judges as long as the momentum is staying consistent. That's a technique that drivers use in the modern era to to control these thousand horsepower vehicles. Right. But I think you're right. There was a slight. A decrease in the smoke line from Dylan Hughes, and he may have run into a similar issue as Brandon Sorson, but for a different reason. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 you know, just just take a look at it here. Look at this angle. You can see, yeah, look at that front left, just absolutely just being checked up. Little break in the smoke. He he might have saved him. He might have straightened out. <laughs> you know, he might have said, "Here you go, buddy. See this land? This is all yours." He says, "Hi, let me help you. He lifted him up. All right, it is unanimous. Matt Field gets the win. Matt Field gets the win, and he will be moving on. So our current points leader, Matt Field, gets the win and advances on. It'll be Denova and Field in the final four. And here we go. We are seeing Odie Bakshis. Odie Bakshis will lead Taylor Hole, will chase for the third time between these two gentlemen. Odie Bakshis initiates not as high as we've seen from previous battles. And now comes into that second outside zone. Taylor Hole falls back quite a bit. Not as aggressive as we've seen from the previous battles. <laughs> and now in that final outside zone goes Odie Bakshis and Taylor Hole. So unfortunately, maybe, you know, a little bit of wear and tear on both the driver and, and the vehicle. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. Seemed like Odie put a little bit more in the car this time around. He's kind of able to hold off Taylor Hole in important parts of the track, like this big bank here. He's on a mid-high line. He comes down in the right section on outside zone two, fills it completely. Taylor is just not really given an opportunity to attack in the same way that he did on those one more time battles. And even here towards the end, he still is able to give a car length there to Odie Bocci's towards the end. So I think. If you're a spotter for Bakshi, he's, he's done his job on run number one, but we still have 50% of the battle left to go, and now Taylor Hole gets an opportunity to lead. And we will be taking, uh, a, if we get a winner, no, sorry. No, we will be advancing onto Osbo and Eve Meyer, which is great, so that, that'll that work. Um, and then shortly thereafter, the we'll go from getting to the winner of this battle. So Von Gitt Jr. waits in the wing. Von Gitt Jr. doing battle with the winner here, either Taylor Hole. Who's leading or Odie Bakshi's? Taylor Hole initiates. Look at that. You see Odie Bakshi's flexing on a little bit higher there, but you want to see them mimic that angle and their line. Oh. So, how is this going to fare? Oh, wow. Great lead run by Taylor Hole. Look at that snappy transition. That's what we saw from earlier. But Odie Bakshi's shown you why he's currently second in points and a real championship contender. Everything about he made that, that. He made that painfully obvious. <laughs> painfully. Everything about that run said all out, right? Yeah. It didn't seem like there was much more that drivers. could be given for both drivers. And uh, that is one of the things I love about this sport is that you get these moments where they're pushing the cars, they're pushing their own personal skill to the level, their driver skill, everything that they've learned in leading up to this point. And we're just seeing an incredible performance out of both drivers here uh, in the great eight to get into the final four. The one more time battle, one two more time battle uh, <laughs> may come to a resolution here, but it was not without great performances uh, by both drivers. Yeah, round of applause for both these drivers, these two gladiators of the sport, Odie Bakshis and Taylor Hull. Slide of left for Odie, right for Taylor Hull. And A, hey, Taylor, Whole family, great job, but Odie Bakshis gets the win. Odie gets the win and will be advancing on.
joked, actually. I was just joking. Here we go to the Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota Supra, the GR Supra, Gasu Racing, and then Eve Meyer in his Drift Force BMW. Initiating into that bank, there's Frederick Oswald going for it. Remember, your number two qualifier, Eve Meyer, has a big hill to climb. Going against the Norwegian Hammer, that second outside zone. Eve Meyer, you can see him just pedaling back, keeping the control. But Frederick Osbo, he, we saw that earlier from today as Osbo against Rome. They had that one more time battle. So uh, battle the BMWs, right? Uh, you saw Rome and now, now here Eve Meyer. Yeah, and Eve definitely having a coming of age moment here in that second outside zone where a lot of guys have been getting into trouble. Really handled that well against Osbo. Notice initiating right at the same time, keeping the same relative line, trying to gather proximity, and does a great job here in this second outside zone, not getting held up. And notice he's almost right at the line with Osbo, but Osbo sees that Eve is trying to close the door, really puts on the throttle here, establishes a gap towards the latter part of outside zone three, and that comes on top of a near flawless lead run in almost every area of the course. All right, let's alternate the order here, and this is where Osbo could really lock it in with a solid chase run, but hes I, I feel like he's going to tread softly. But Eve Meyer, Eve Meyer could really throw down and ruin Osbo's day. Let's see what Eve's got up his sleeve. Eve Meyer initiates. And there's Osbo. No, no backing down from the Norwegian Hammer. Into that second outside zone, going into the crease, getting into the groove. Into that second outside zone. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. The gold nose just barely let me buy that BMW go by. And through the smoke, you can see the headlights shining. Look at that. Osbo backing off a little bit there. Didn't want to take out another BMW around that uh, last third of that outside zone. The ability for Frederick Osbo to push it up to the absolute limit has been pretty apparent uh, in this event. And I, as we commented in the, in the show open, we were still kind of waiting to see him have his breakout moment. This might be just it because his chase runs have had these moments where he is literally inches away from the driver in front of him, not for a brief moment, for, but for a sustained period of time. And this outside zone three is another great example of what we see he is capable of as a chase driver. So tremendous job all the way around and looks like he is really getting that vehicle dialed in. Eve, on the other hand, still a great performance from him. He is really making and creating some damage of his own in this championship chase by having some great results these past few rounds. And he's attacking Frederick Osbo in both positions, but I think Osbo just had a little bit of an edge here. All right, slide them left for Osbo, right for Eve Meyer. I assume they're going to slide left, and there you have it. Frederick Osbo. Frederick Osbo is going to the final four. So we have on that left side, Denopa versus Field, and now on the other side. These are guys that are you know, still involved. Forsberg's got three. Odibachi seems like he should have one. Whether yep. it's this year or sometime in the future, he is championship caliber driver. Up left, right, and center. Here we go. Odie Bakshis will lead. Bonkin Jr. Give it chase. Our final battle of the great eight. Odie Bakshis initiates. And you can see Bonkin Jr. chasing him down. Might be calculating some formulas here as far as, or Odie might just be pulling away from him right now. Odie fills all that second outside zone. Bonkin Jr. now maneuvers that into the third and final outside zone. Banging on the door. As Vaughn gets in the side of Odie Bakshis, that very well might have shut him down. That was a just square shoulder block. That was a that was a slam dance, little little Mr. Plow jammer there. Well, that one, unlike some of the others that we've seen here in the past few battles, didn't seem like it could be sustained as much as the others. And this is going to be the key point of the battle on this particular run, at least. Both drivers flying through the course. Odie maybe getting a little bit of edge by holding Vaughn off here. But as we get to this third outside zone, this is where we start to see drivers really compress. We get one bang there, and oh, I see then the overhead. it looks like it looks like Odie was already going deep into that but zone. Watch. And as as he's getting right to the edge, Vaughn taps, and then Odie kind of widens out the apex there and goes off course. Watch Odie again, though. Again, we're we're seeing this 
primarily in outside zone one, but that overhead, watch the smoke signal. Does it does it dissipate because of contact? So let's let's take a look at this because yeah, we're we're seeing a lot of different things come together here. So Ryan, watch watch Odie here. I don't yeah, it doesn't look like you got a lot of whiz bangs going on there. Th this one has like a more of a direct line from contact to off course. Um, and taking a look at the line that Odie was drawing, it didn't seem like he was pushing out super wide in that section. He got wide at the beginning of outside zone three, and some of the line is rubbed away, but uh, there definitely is going to have to be a, a tough call made by the judges here. Man, I'll tell you what, not a corner of Odie's vehicle is safe. That thing has is missing bumpers, fenders, it's, it's banged on both sides of the car. Uh, this, this thing absolutely taking a beating that Falcon tire fuel suspension S15. So uh, the paint chips on the wall, as uh, as they painted it, are, are are coming off actually, and it was a lot more yesterday, but now it seems like they're scraped them all off pretty much now. All right, let's take a look at this again here, Ryan. And just off screen, we're getting our safety car back. So getting one more look at it from uh, the camera that's out to our right, up by the far right hand side of the furthest grandstand. And um, obviously the driver's getting back to the line. So it doesn't seem like they feel like there's any major mechanical damage here. Let's get this second half underway. Yeah, so that tells me that Odie, you know, just was in it. He's OK. He's feeling all right. So uh, here we go. Bonkin Jr., Odie Bakshis. Vaughn will lead, Odie will give chase. Don't leave in the judges' hands. Throw down a gangster run as Vaughn. Little separation here between the two drivers. Massive angle there for Vaughn Kent Jr. Drops down, who taking a bit of a tighter line there. Vaughn, big angle, Odie Bakshis comes on in that last and final outside zone. And bring it across the finish line, Ryan. That contact help her, and also who's at fault? Somebody does need to be deemed at fault. Well, in, it's the, gonna, in the judge's mind, it's an incomplete run because the, the the run stopped, right? So that's a a collision. Somebody went off course, and this run right here would have been a, a tremendous conclusion had that not happened. I mean, Vaughn gets a very stable initiation to a great line up top, huge angle here. He's on that tighter line, but look at how well it sets him up on that second outside zone. I mean, just beautiful through there. Right there, a little bit of an adjustment. Odie kind of takes advantage. He's just inside the smoke line here. Good push by him through the finish line and would have loved to have seen that on the first run as well. But it did come to a stark conclusion there that it's going to have to be, uh, you know, basically analyzed by the judges and tell us what happened. Well, Ryan, again, Points, on, points at stake. Remember, talking about Odie winning a round, Chelsea, and let's take a look at the BC Racing overhead, side-by-side -side view, go for the gold. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, this isn't so much of a comparison. It's really just about trying to figure out who's at fault for Odie going off of course there. Um, at, as it looks, you know, Odie is, Thick smoke line there, staying on throttle. Vaughn taps the brakes. He's, he's left foot braking, and that's perfectly fine to keep the car stabilized, moving forward with momentum. Let's find out. Here we go. Was Odie going off course is wow. the big question. Too. Oh, look at this. So Vaughn, Vaughn Gitt Jr. Wow. gets the win. So second in points, Odie Bakshi. So that means Odie was going off course, right? Ryan, uh, tell us what yeah, happened. Ryan Lontane, what's up? Hi, guys. Nice to talk to you. Good success. He is your points leader, Denova. Look at that long run up there. He knows he's got some horsepower on deck. Here we go, boys. This should be one for the ages here at Lake Erie Speedway. Look at that, Chelsea Denova nosing in, not mimicking that angle, but definitely has the proximity. Let's see how he handles it coming at second outside zone. Matt Field dives in, Chelsea Denova mirroring him right there. Nice little glancing across the nose of Chelsea Denova and bringing it around that last and final outside zone. Woo! Told you it's gonna be a good one. They keep it clean. Everything is above the belt. Well done from Field and Denofa.
Well, it could be argued pretty, I think, successfully that Matt Field has the most momentum in the series right now. And Chelsea Denofa does that diving in approach on the initiation, but he loses a little bit of angle there, keeps a proximity, and is back in the fight pretty quickly. But that was a mistake by Denofa in the chase position. Matt Field filling that second outside zone extremely well, but Denofa trying to keep him in tow, not let him run away. Field right at the edge of that outside zone three, maybe a right hand a right uh, rear tire on that outside line but a great way to start the final four this is uh, exactly what we needed to see like it where you know we're seeing a lot of contact previously now i th i think it's what's really going to shine here i like what Odie said about just hey this is the way i'm driving this is this is what's to be expected you know the smoke signal the only indicator is speed i mean you know, you want to stay within the spirit of drifting, but you don't want to over kind of get all these different analytics. So here we go. Chelsea Denova out front. Matfield in the chase position. Oh, buddy. Matfield goes for it. Chelsea Denova looking a lot more settled, more angle, but Field, watch this. He's going to come in here on the second. Oh, and there was the crease playing another role, and he's really deep in that slope. Matfield way offline as Denova continues through the course. Oh, and Matt Field, man, that was the largest role that Crease played up until this point, Ryan. Yeah, that was, I think, Matt Field coming a bit unstuck there and looking atypical Matt Field in the chase position. That was the first time, I think, this year we've seen him make quite a few mistakes in that position in the chase. He does dive in, but DeNova, look how deep he is into that outside zone. Beautiful job, big angle there, mid inside line, and then Matt Field surging forward there, straightens out, then goes off course on the transition from two to three. Now he's really far behind playing catch up, and you can see how tight of a line he had as he made that transition from two to three. Then he goes almost off course there, taking out that marker to end outside zone four. All right, and I believe you know the outcome of this, which is very unfortunate for Matt Field. But Denofa could go for another victory like he did in Orlando. Again, totally unofficial, but going off of that, it just it, no, you know, Denofa not throwing him off. Absolutely came in, kicked a hole in the speaker, and uh, and left. Matt Field. And Chelsea Denofa, a great way to begin Final Four. For one driver more than the other. Slide him left for Denofa, right for field. And there it is. Chelsea Denofa gets the win. He's going to the finals as a RTR won two last year, right? We saw we saw Vaughn, Vaughn and Chelsea, if I can recall, I believe it was. Here we go. Frederick Osbo, Vaughn Kitt Jr. Go look into that, somebody. Frederick Osbo and that Rockstar injury, Toyota GR Supra. Leading the pack here in that first outside zone. We've got Golden Chrome ripping around the track. Frederick Osbo, Vaughn Gittin Jr. We did, we saw this with Odie where he leaves himself a lot of room, but he might be able to grip up now. Look at that. Frederick Osbo pulling that front right past his Vaughn Gittin Jr. These guys hitting the three wheel motions. Looks like Osbo left a little in the tank here as we go down to the final four. The Type S lights are on. What do you think, Ryan? Like well, is, is, this, is this strategy for Vaughn or Osbo? What do you think? I, I mean, everything is strategy, but a, a lot of this is just driving all out and right, trying to conserve enough tire to be powerful on your lead as you can in your chase. Vaughn does give Osbo a bit of, a, of some room there. He reels him in here in outside zone two, but Osbo is driving incredibly in that lead position, right? Filling outside zone two, entering three, driving right at the edge of the course there going a little bit wide on three as we're starting to see some of those lines get rubbed out. And this time, Vaughn was not able to stay as super close as he was to Odie on that previous run, uh, which has turned out to be a controversial battle. But now they will switch things up and we'll see if Osbo can continue that tear here in his chase run against Vaughn Gittin Jr. Here we go, the second half of this battle. Who's going to the finals? Vaughn Gittin Jr., Frederick Osbo, let's send it! Here we go, Von Ginn Jr. initiates. Osmo very low on the bank, very surprising, as Ginn has some in the tank, as he goes against the Norwegian Hammer, the professional fun hammer, into that second outside zone. Osbo, something is afoot, all did tire. 
as Vaughn oh, almost oh spinning out. What is going? They might be out of tire, Ryan. Yeah. I believe both drivers potentially DB'd for, for Osbell. I'm not seeing that, that right side, what see, left side. See. Oh boy, did we saw this before? Yeah. It, it kind of start. I think it start. It happened on initiation potentially, but I'm not 100% about that. Uh, I noticed that there was something a little janky going on with Osbo, and then it started to get more out of whack as he left outside zone two. Now, it's not going to matter because this is the second half of the run. The, the run is, is going to be judged as is. But Boom, watch, see right, right there, there. Immediately, before he even initiated. Yeah, it was almost as if it was coming off leading up. And right now, he I mean, he's in no position to fight. But let's watch Vaughn. What happened Let's there? see he's what happens with Vaughn on that transition. He leaves two. He comes into three. Whoa. Oh, he angles up. And he might have straightened out there. You think? Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to make it sound like that. But it's, yeah. It, well, the straightening out to an incomplete is what, I, is what we're no, trying I to totally ascertain yeah. here. But I mean, it's definitely, it could be in the category of an unchaseable lead as well. So this is going to give us a, a, a good bird's eye view. Osbo's massively fighting the car, and we should watch him. Whoa. Oh, he, he so it's countered. definitely, a, yeah, it's definitely like a big reinitiation. That's an unchaseable lead So, uh, okay, let's assume incomplete yeah. on both drivers yep. on the second run. Goes back to the first, right? Goes back to the first. Goes back to the first. Who did better on the first? I mean, look, <laughs> look, yeah, looking, looking at it, I, I would say Osbo had a, had a, had a bit of an advantage here. So things, things get interesting here. Could it be an OMT? OMT? I don't know. Tough. You know what? I'm just gonna go home. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the side by side. We know how uh, how this how the second half ends up, but let's take a look at this. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching the left hand side of the screen. All I want to try to figure out is if, if if it's an incomplete from both drivers on the right hand side of the screen, who did better in their respective positions on the left hand side? Ooh. And this is you know, and does Osbo edge him out here? Does Vaughn stay in the fight? There's definitely some moments by both drivers there. Vaughn had a weird transition going from uh, from the second outside zone to the third outside zone. We're hearing the, uh, the, the locals feverish about hearing it one more time. Yeah, that, man, the, another wrinkle has come into the mix here. Something else was pointed out to me that if Vaughn incompletes before Osbo, the run is technically over. So if Vaughn incompletes there and then Osbo incompletes there, even though they're independent, the run would be over the moment that Vaughn Gitt Jr. incompletes. Technically, when did, when did Osbo incomplete in the second? I, I think he incompletes right at the beginning of outside zone three. And That's, I think Vaughn... That's go, correct. Go yeah. ahead, Ryan. What we're looking at there is Vaughn over rotating, coming up to outside zone three. He straightens up, gets the car. You can see the rubber from here. You can see where he straightens um, uh, very far inside of that corner. And then as Osbo comes up behind him, he then straightens as well. But it's after Vaughn does his straightening. And this is important because as soon as a lead car uh, straightens, incompletes in any way, the run is over. And then the chase car is not responsible. So watch Vaughn here. He straightens right there, and then right after that, Osbo oh. stops drifting. So um, it, we write the rules this way because we don't want a lead car uh, to incomplete and then force the chase car to keep drifting past potentially a car that has spun out or hit the wall or something like that. So we've always had the rule written that the lead car is the one that sets the um, sets the tone, let's say, for the whole battle. The lead car incompletes, the run is absolutely over at that point in time. Osbo, maybe strategically, he knew his car broke at initiation, but he tried to limp it all the way to that point. When he saw Vaughn straight, he probably said, OK, I'm done. So so let me simplify it here. Um, Osbo's incomplete is actually not relevant in this particular um, instance because once Vaughn incompletes, 
uh, and Osbo has not incompleted, the run is over. So Osbo is not is not given an incomplete in this circumstance, which means that Vaughn has an incomplete, Osbo doesn't. Osbo has two complete runs, Vaughn doesn't have two complete runs. That is a perfect analysis of this run right here, and that comes down, basically right now, Vaughn is gonna be, if Vaughn loses because of that, he's gonna feel really bad because had he just completed the course with an injured car behind him he would have probably had the win i think you should go ahead and put your score in then yeah right. <laughs> yeah it's uh it, that was a crazy turn of events you can see von get junior uh still still pumped you know but i, I like how lontane elaborated these are these are the finite details that that develop similar to that of the brandon Sorensen thing and and that rome and that you know coming come to fruition and and, uh, and certain things just really developing and progressing. Yeah, no, I, and I, I'm really glad that was pointed out because that is something that could be protested by um, Osbo's team. If it turns out that uh, what Ryan says is uh, in agreement with the other judges, um, and, and it turned out that uh, they made a mistake and didn't incomplete that situation for Vaughn, uh, and then that could be protested by Osbo's team, and he would win that protest. Scores are in, Ryan, and we talked about that. Here we go, slide him left for Osbo, slide him right for Von Kidd Jr., who's going against Chelsea Nova. In the finals, one vote for Frederick Osbo, two votes for Frederick Osbo. Osbo is going to the finals. Great elaboration by Ryan Lontane on behalf of the judges. It is unanimous, so Osbo will be heading to the pits, working on his vehicle, and Ryan, keep in mind, we do give them an allotted amount of time there goes Vaughn Gitt Jr. He will, uh, he will not get third place. He will not hold carbon fiber as Matt Field will get third place. And Osbo, who was in third place, could potentially surpass that of Odie Bakshi's in the points. It's still unclear to me, uh, not the result, but what happened, what happened to Osbo's car? Yeah, it, that's not the first time we've seen that, where he just dumps like a truck what was as uh, he goes in and that was, it wasn't under angle. That's what's even more weird. It's like, it wasn't under severe angle. It just bottomed out and it fell out from underneath them and slammed the car down. How he kept drifting through that is besides me, but these guys are talented. They make it look easy. When we come back, we'll get an update on what's going on in the Norwegian Hammers pit. We saw the, uh, the conditions are drying out just a little bit. So I feel like we will be seeing a little higher speeds here coming to that first outer zone. I wonder if the gearing's gonna work out for Frederick Osbo as Chris Forsberg takes a shallower line here. Frederick goes all the way out to that second outer zone. And now Chris gets that. Look at that, uh, that absolute proximity. And now, ooh, it shallows up, takes out that front flip. He had to do it. Yeah, he had to do that. And then goes into that final outer zone. So shallow by Chris Forsberg. And this is a must win for him. He all him My just goodness. a few rounds ago. And here he is, Matt Field. A victory lap for the Falcon Tire Drift Cave Corvette, the Beast of the Bay, Triple Seven. Your winner here at E Town, the debut of the purpose built Drift Coliseum here at English Town Raceway Park. Matt Field gets the victory as Chris Forsberg retires and the Falcon Tire smoke gets created. Ryan. Yeah, Mr. Appropriate Confidence coming <laughs> through again. Doing well based on preparation. Matt Field, your winner here at English Town Raceway. Unfortunately for Chris, was not able to get the car to the line for the second run. He will get that second place, though, much needed as he tries to rack up points for what could potentially be a fourth championship, but does have some work to do, some gremlins to work out, and let's not forget that Frederick Osbo also capturing a podium here tonight. All screaming, need something fast to outrun the demons. Nothing come between the boy and his freedom. What good are rights when y'all don't even read them?
Formula Drift is brought to you by Air Force. Aim high. Type S, official lighting sponsor of Formula Drift. Lights, camera, power, fun. And GT Radial, experience the performance. So what we're seeing here is Kevin Wells is in the pit. He's got a clock there that says seven minutes. What's that seven minutes? And what that seven minutes mean is, if you can elaborate, how much time does Freddie have? Because he doesn't just have seven minutes. He has a little more. Yeah, in the transition to from the final four to the finals, when we have uh, a situation like this, there is a seven-minute time allotment. And actually, this was born out of Chelsea DeNofa and Vaughn Gittin Jr. situation last year in Seattle. We give them a maximum amount of seven minutes to get the car ready to go. And if he's not ready to go, he will have to bow out of competition. However, he still has his competition timeout. So you can add another five minutes on top of that. But he is not given an unlimited amount of time. He gets seven minutes by the way the, way the rules are right now, given the situation. And then if that expires, he does need to use that competition timeout. Oh, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at a little uh, looking a little conversation between Gittin and Osbo. The judges are trying to be mind readers, and they can't be mind readers. I agree with that. I know you do. Yeah, come here. Because we start this precedent, it just ends up being bullshit. I'm not sure the the mind reading comment there is pretty simple. I want to hear this. Hold on. I saw that. So the car was broken the whole time. Yeah. And I was doing everything I could to finish. I know. Right? I understand. And when I came out of out of and the three, and the smokes came that way, yeah. I couldn't see anything. Sure, but you were 10 cars back, like you're not going to be able to see. Yeah, I know that. All so, right, thank you. Oh, we got to focus on that truck. All right, let's go. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure what the mind reading comment has to do with I think anything. A lot the the judges there. didn't really have to mind read anything. All they had to do was determine did Frederick Osbo or excuse me, did Vaughn Gittin Jr. incomplete prior to Osbo? And that's, that, that's so, pretty clear. Speaking of mind reading, he's speculating on what the what was down. Maybe he doesn't know absolutely definitively clear. He does have a spotter up here. Also, speaking of mind reading, might be mind games because guess what? He's going against Chelsea Denofa. Right, so, right. you know what I mean? That, and Stefan Papadakis is making it real clear, right saying, hey, he's got he's got to focus on this. Lorette, I hear you down there. Lorette, what's up? Well, guys, there's obviously a lot of movement down here. Steph Papadakis is in Frederick Osbo's window, and they are having a conversation. Uh, Steph obviously asked Vaughn to leave so they can have a conversation after the event. Um, of course, I'd like to step in there and find out what Steph is talking to him about, but I also don't want to interrupt uh, team conversations. So uh, the guys right now working really hard on the driver's side. Uh, higher well down here can't tell if they're working on suspension or the tie rod if they're trying to remove that um, again a lot of bodies a lot of parts going on uh, potentially the let me see if I can come in hey Frederick do you know what the guys are trying to fix back here sorry Lorette one more time do you know what the guys are yeah, we're trying to fix the car. Uh, suspension broke, and I was doing everything I could to make it through that run. It broke early on. Uh, I was hanging on for dear life till I got into turn three, saw a big smoke screen there with JR the opposite way, and I, I was like, holy, what happened now? So that was a really weird turn of events. Obviously, with a broken car, we, we kind of got gifted it a little bit, but that's the way the rules are, and I think we had a good lead and uh, now we're just trying to fix the car. Yeah. Well, we came in a little bit late to the conversation that you and Vaughn were having. What was he saying? So I think uh, Vaughn, they're, they're fishing for uh, info for a protest, which they're totally in the right to do. Um, I, and I totally get it, because this is not the way we want to move on. Uh, it's also not the way anyone would want to move on, but it's the way that the, the competition is. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we're just over here trying to get this thing ready to rock again. And I'd love to do it again. I'd love to do it again and again and again. So we'll, we'll see if we can get to that point. Okay. Thank you, Frederick. Guys. Thank you, Lorette. I'd, uh, I'd definitely love for you to get some words with Von Gitt Jr., but his teammate also, you know, getting, getting prepared for battle. Not as frantic, but uh, you can see Aldo and the boys down there working feverishly on the vehicle. And that whole Wisefab corner being swapped out. So, so uh, you know, 
you know, here, here's the question is, how much damage was sustained? Is it repairable? Are the parts they're replacing? Also, you got to think about alignment. You know, again, they have the corners of the vehicle ready to go, but uh, you can see Shaldo down there and the boys, so thrashing on the vehicle. So uh, take a look at that clock, how much time is left, and as soon as that thing expires, I have to assume it would it'd be silly for them not. So two minutes, you can see just over the side of the Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota Supra, the Toyota GR Supra on Nitto tires. So it's an all Nitto tire final as Denofa will be going against uh, Osbo. So uh, like I said, Ryan, Matt Field will be getting third place, but uh, the question is who is going to be getting the win? So as the clock is ticking down, coilovers are going on. So taking a look at this, you can see all hands on deck for Frederick Osbo as Papadakis Racing Team, Toyota Gazoo Racing. And uh, just a, a crazy scenario unfolds once again. Adam Jabe, thanks for watching. Thanks to all the fans for watching. Randy Johnson, see you soon there. Remember, tune in or be there in person July 30th and 31st. July 30th and 31st. That is our next round of competition. It is pro only, not pro and pro spec. And then that is in Seattle at Evergreen Speedway. And then we continue on to Worldwide Technology Raceway. That is just outside of St. Louis in Madison, Illinois, just across the Mississippi River. So join us there for uh, round six and round three of the Pro Spec Championship. So round six of pro and round three of pro spec. That's the August 27th and 28th. And then there you see Long Beach, California, September 17th and 18th, the streets of Long Beach being utilized because the next weekend will be that of the Long Beach Grand Prix. So 30 seconds on the clock. Obviously not going to be finished. The question is, when this expires, they will obviously call their competition timeout, and that would only mean a five-minute allotment. So Chelsea Denofa could very well receive the victory even without having to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, wheel to wheel. So there we go, 10 seconds, nine. It's not New Year's for anybody. No ball is dropping, and the car is not dropping like it did earlier. And there it goes. So now the five minute, are you calling it? And he is calling it. Kevin, great position that clock. Put it back up there. Put it back up there where you had it. Perfect placement. So when we come back, five minutes is a ticking. And the plot thickens here at round four of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. Jared Deanna, Ryan Sage, Lorette Nickel, your tour guides, but more importantly, an all Nitto tire final. Will Osbo get his Toyota Supra and his team the unsung heroes getting the camera, getting the spotlight, all hands on deck. Frederick Osbo, is he going to get the car back together? Chelsea Nova waits in the wings. When we return, we'll find out. Your body is a machine with 800 horses coursing through its veins. Ignite it. I'm Dylan Hughes, Formula Drift Pro Driver, and today we're going to talk about Royal Purple HPS and what actually goes into it. There's a lot of talk about additives, and Royal Purple has its proprietary Centerlick technology. It is fortified with a high level of zinc phosphorus anti-wear additive for exceptional protection against heat and wear. Its high film strength improves sealing between the piston ring and cylinder wall for maximum horsepower and torque. Royal Purple HPS, race car technology for the street.
Link ECU produces standalone engine management technology with a range of products that allow you to unleash the power of your engine. Acting as your car's brain, Link ECU control electronic fuel injection and ignition. A magnitude of sensor inputs and outputs ensure your engine exceeds your expectations. Built-in safety features guarantee engine protection and data logs keep you informed on its performance. Smoke your tires, not your engine, with a world-leading Link ECU.